Professor Christopher Curtis from the University of Johannesburg is going to be unpacking some of the challenges in relation to water infrastructure and the energy crisis in the country at large. So on that note, Professor Christopher, good afternoon and thank you for your time on the SABC at this hour. Afternoon, yeah. Thanks for the invitation. Prof, as I alluded to, we're looking at the hits and misses, a report card of sorts, given what was promised, what was under-delivered and really where to from here. And shining a spotlight on the energy crisis, providing energy security is imperative for the country. It's the lifeblood of the economy as well. And so from your vantage point, given the promises issued on that front with relation to the energy crisis, the appointment of the electricity minister, the running blackouts, uh, load shedding, we've also got missing court deadlines, and um, just the reality on the ground, how it's impacted SMMEs, how, how would you rate what's been done on that front? Well, from uh, my point of view as a water resources specialist rather than an energy specialist, um, you can see that um, rolling blackouts and load shedding have had an impact on uh, many aspects of, uh, well, of the economy, on small businesses, on tourism. Um, and not only the direct impacts of the load shedding that we've seen and the rolling blackouts, but how that affects the water resources in the country. So what I'm really hoping to see in the State of Nation address um, is reference to a sort of clear outline of a five-year plan as to what can be done to improve water and sanitation security in the country. Because mm -hmm. these are not totally related to um, the energy crisis, but these things are interlinked to here. You hear talk of something called the water energy food nexus, where none of these factors can be considered in isolation. They all impact on each other. Uh, but from my side, I'd like to see prone and sanitation underlying all these other issues. Well, Prof, let's get into that. Um, as you mentioned, the issues are interlinked. And so as we shine a spotlight on the water crisis in the country alone, there was the no drop, blue drop and green drop report that had been rele uh, released. It unearthed the state of our infrastructure, our assets, just the quality as well. H help us explore that a little bit further and, and the, the knock and effects it's had for, for South Africa at large. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the... Uh current Minister of Water and Sanitation is to be applauded for reintroducing the Blue Drop and Green Drop programs. They uh, they were suspended since 2014, I think, and then reintroduced in 2022. Um, and I think one of the reasons for that suspension was that the uh, sort of very uh, dire picture they paint of the country. Um, but the figures from the Blue Drop and Green Drop program are not promising. Things are going in the wrong direction. They're getting worse than all getting better. Um, so, for example, according to the Blue Drop report, uh, we have plenty of water infrastructure capacity to produce drinking water in the country. In fact, we have 27% spare capacity to provide more drinking water. That's on paper. Uh, but in practice, um, only 3%, 26 out of 958 water systems in the country achieve the gold standard of Blue Drop accreditation, uh, while 29% um, were in a critical state. So they're, they're the poorest performers. And of course, we've seen health crises like the cholera outbreak in Hammondskraal last year, um, we see on the news this week um, more evidence of cholera cases in Gauteng, in Limpopo, um, and especially in neighboring countries like Zimbabwe and Zambia um, suffering from cholera outbreaks. And this is all related to the state of our wastewater treatment facilities, which, of course, is not helped by the uh, energy situation that we have as well in the energy blackouts. So, Prof, on that note, what are some of the issues that need to be included in the action plan to be developed by Water Services Authority to rectify this, to improve this, to improve the poor um, quality, just the, the water supply, infrastructure at large? I'm speaking about accountability measures. I'm speaking about even incentives for local government to perform. What are you observing on that front? Yeah, well, I see a lot on the ground. I work with activists in Johannesburg, especially being based at UJ. Um, and I see the state of our rivers at first hand, and I think that's really at the heart of many of the problems that we face, is the failure of our wastewater treatment plants. So in the Green Draw Progress Report, I think the full report is due to come out um, next year, um, but uh, two thirds of all wastewater treatment plants, that's over a thousand wastewater treatment plants in the country, are in the highest risk categories, either high risk or in a critical state. And that means we have raw sewage in our rivers, I work with um, grassroots organizations like Arma Action for Responsible Management of Our Rivers. They maintain a Facebook page where we get comments from activists all over the country about issues with sewage um, in the rivers. We hear from Cape Town, we hear from Peter Barrisburg, we hear from Durban, we hear from the Eastern Cape, we hear from PE, and all over Gauteng. 
um, about terrible water quality in our rivers. And of course, that the rivers feed into our dams. Um, for example, our rivers in uh, Johannesburg feed north into Hobby's Port Dam, which has a whole raft of problems with sewage inflow, with excess nutrients, with water hyacinth. But we also have problems in the Vile system as well. Some of our rivers in the south of the city flow down into the Vile. Um, and so really our sewage is going into our own drinking water. So when we allow our wastewater treatment works to fail, um, it has impacts on all aspects of society, from human health, from economic activity, to tourism, to any uses that we want to put our water resources to. So I would say that start with the wastewater treatment works, fix those, hold municipalities accountable. And in fact, if I can um, quote the minister from the latest Green Drop report, he said, uh, and I quote from the foreword, I need to make it clear that action will be taken against those municipalities that flagrantly put the lives of our people environment at risk. So I really hope the State of the Nation address will sort of add some uh, flesh to those bones and an action plan as to how that's going to be done and to actually force our municipalities to do what they're supposed to be doing. Because at the moment we have a vacuum where um, concerned citizens, activists, NGOs are stepping into that space, they're cleaning up rivers. In, Ale in Alexandria and Johannesburg, we have an organisation called the Alex Water Warriors, over 1,700 volunteers removing trash from the river. And this is not their job. This should be the municipality's job. But people care about their environment. So I'd like to see improvements there. And that will have knock-on improvements in the state of our drinking water that comes from the dams, um, in tourism, for example, around Hartbeach Port Dam. I see it's more than a third covered in water hyacinth at the moment because we're allowing sewage to flow into that system. So we've got fertilizers in that system. The plants love it. They grow. You can't launch boats. You can't... Um, can't be fishing, you can't make any use of that water resource. Yeah. Well, so, Prof, on the back of that, given the knock-on effects that you've now alluded to, even man better managing, um, you know, water in terms of the lost water, um, the leak leaking bucket syndrome that um, has also come to the fore, um, looking at the quality at large, is there enough political will to act? And, and if so, how? Just on the back of what you've quoted from the minister. Look, I've seen promising signs in the latest Blue Drop and Green Drop reports. Um, I hope those promises are delivered upon. I hope we hear some more about it in SONA um, tonight. But even the government's, um, national governments and the Department of Water and Sanitation's own projections are that by 2030, we're going to have a 17% shortfall um, in water supply relative to demand nationally. Um, and we have uh, phase two of the Lesotho Highlands Water Project, the Palihali Dam. At one stage, it was supposed to be finished in 2018. I see the latest projections say that it may be 2028. So for the next five years, I don't really see what the plan is. Um, I do know that um, the department is asking citizens to do their part to try and reduce their demand, to try and reduce their water usage. Um, according to the No Drop report and the latest um, National Water Resource Strategy 3 document, about 45% of our water that has been treated for drinking and for domestic usage is lost as non-revenue water. So that's either leaky pipes well, that's um, some customers in some areas, uh, many of whom are too poor to pay, who don't pay for that water. Mm. Therefore, the municipalities would argue that they don't have the revenue to pay to uh, maintain or improve their infrastructure. So it's not a simple problem. Um, I've seen signs that the will is there, but we need to see the delivery.